The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily represent those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting group. If you or anyone you know might be interested in making a television show, please call 260-421-1250. Okay, well, tonight's meeting is all about marketing your art rather than letting it collect dust in the corners of every room of your house. We're going to try to figure out the best way to get it marketed. And the way we're going to run this is that I'll start out introducing my panel, and then um, Heidi will start, and then John will talk about his portion, and then Susan will wrap it up. And then we'll have questions at the end. So if you think of a question while somebody's speaking, write it down. And then at the end, we'll take questions. And if you're online, then put it in the chat box. And then we'll get to that at the end as well. And that's the format. It would be easy if there was a model for success. But unfortunately, there isn't. But we do have a few experts here that are going to share some tips and secrets that they have. And hopefully, we'll get some good ideas from all of this. So I'd like to introduce Heidi Malott, who will be talking about Facebook and uh, Instagram and some of the other social media platforms. Then we have Susan Voigt next to her, who will be uh, talking about retail and other methods of marketing and also concluding the discussion. And then John Kelty will be talking about art fairs and open studios and all kinds of other interesting things and ways that we can get our name out there. You can talk about that. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Heidi. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. How many of you have a Facebook account? Can you speak up a little bit? Yes. How many of you have a Facebook account or um, Instagram, TikTok? OK. Well, I'm glad most of you have Facebook. Um, marketing via social media brings the world to your door. Having a website helps, but it's amazing that interaction every day or even three to five times a week online makes a huge difference. I've been doing this since 2006, and I learn everything the hard way, I'll be honest. Um, I don't like to, I don't like change and new things, and social media is so fluid, it changes every day. <laughs> so I've learned over the years to put my um, hesitation aside and just go with it. And it definitely helps to have young adults in your life um, my 13-year-old, my youngest, helps me all the time with the silliest things on Facebook or any um, social media. If you have a, um, a grand, any young adult in your life, a grandchild or a child, it's wonderful to um, ask them if a you have questions. <laughs> right, I know. They know how to do it. They are, it's their world. But I'm going to try to read off of my notes just so I cover as much as I can without running down a bunch of rabbit holes. Um, let's see here. So I started a blog. Anybody have a blog? I started one in 2006, and that's kind of what got me rolling on the whole social media internet world. Um, I stopped my blog about a year ago just because it was so time consuming, and it did get hacked. Um, but I enjoyed it when I had it. It was a good start. But I, I found myself spending more time on social media and writing about my artwork than I did painting. And I don't have time for that. I want to spend as much time as I can. I know we all have a limited amount of time to create. So I um, set my blog aside, and it really didn't hurt me. I do have people say, where's your blog? You know, And I try to redirect them to where I am. But um, then the blog opened up the world of daily painting. I don't know if you're familiar with daily painters. There's daily paint, uh, let me look it up here. Daily paint, oh gosh. Dailypaintworks.com. Dailypaintworks.com. And they are, it's an open, I think it's $13 a month if you want to join. You. Um, 
it's a website of artists from around the world that post as much as they can. It helps to post three to five times a week on there because it is a daily painter's website. People usually stick to posting their little oil studies for a larger painting or even sketches. And what it is is it's a wonderful network that offers um, a world of people on there, other artists, and you can purchase a website um, domain through them and you can people can go to can the library gallery. please help us we lost the film from the library <clears throat> is there still sound mute it again can you hear us now the library's no the library is no longer pinned uh -oh. Oh, i think uh, that, if you want to pin it that's on your end where's my chat okay we're back Okay. We're back. Okay. Okay. We're good. So you can go to Daily Paintworks, and if you are on there, they will, um, they can upload your work from your blog, or you can download it every day. Um, I, I'm trying to think. I download it every day, and um, you can do them a, a, like a week in advance, so you're not doing it every single day. But the nice thing is, it's attached to your website and people can ask you questions. Um, people have found me there for commissioned work. That opens up all kinds of um, different possibilities. So the dailypaintworks.com online is very helpful. Now, um, let's see here. With social media, if you are on Facebook, I am going to strongly advise you to look into Instagram because Instagram is owned by Facebook now. I don't know, I think it may have always been, but I'm not sure. But now that it's owned by Facebook, you can post on Facebook, click a button. If you set up your Instagram account with your same Facebook account, they are linked. And you can post your artwork or any of your art news and hit a button and it will automatically go to Instagram. Now what I love about Instagram is I can follow all the artists I want, any galleries, um, and on my page when I go on there, like you would for Facebook, all I see are the artists I follow. All I see are a sea of artists. I'm not seeing what someone ate for dinner last night. I'm not seeing people's puppies and babies, which are great but I love to see the artwork on there. And I post my artwork on there. And when you go to my account on Instagram, you're not just seeing my latest post. You, you click on my um, username. If you see my art, you just click on a button and it will take you to my Instagram page or yours. And it is an entire grid. It's a wonderful gallery that shows all your artwork. And it's fantastic because you're not looking through people's um, writings and you're not lost in people's baby pictures. So Instagram, definitely consider it. I get a lot of sales through Instagram. And the nice thing is I can link my daily paint works right from that page. So they just click a button and they're right on my website immediately. So you can't beat that because people in the social media world, as you know, you have seconds to get someone's attention and if they if they find it difficult to find you they don't know how to click to find your website or they have to ask you the price of work they may move on it has to be instant um, it's helpful so um, definitely consider Instagram I'm very happy with it I honestly like it better than Facebook but since they're connected it makes it easier now, I'm almost embarrassed to say I am on TikTok now, but I have a young child, and I saw, um, they're like, you gotta try it. Now, that's totally optional. I don't know how many sales I get from TikTok. It's pretty new, but I do enjoy making little videos. I don't know if you follow me on Facebook. It's just Heidi Malott on Facebook. I use my name, and it's Heidi Malott Art on Instagram. But if you go on there, you'll see a lot of artists are starting to do videos and, and not just pictures of their artwork. Um, it's good to post 
like let's say you may not be able to get one painting done a day. I paint small. This is kind of what started it for me because I was a stay-at-home mom with four kids and had barely any time to paint. And you know how it is when you have one large painting you're working on and if it doesn't turn out, you just it's kind of frustrating. So I was working on small six by six paintings and it was good exercise and I still do them and I'm moving back into the larger pieces. But let's say you're working on a large painting. It's okay to show a few brush strokes with your phone. Just videotape it, um, download it to the post like you would a picture um, or a portion of your painting. You don't have to necessarily show um, the whole painting, like don't wait until you're done and post. If you want to post online more often, it makes a difference. So you don't have to have a new piece of work every day. You can maybe show a work in progress. You can show a throwback to an older painting from a year ago or something. But anything to get that interaction. I don't know if any of you are familiar with algorithms on social media. They're terrible. I can't stand it. I started out in 2006 and I was selling almost every painting I did. And then 10 years later, the search engines changed everything. The algorithms um, make it harder for people to find your work. And there's also a sea of more artists online too. So the sales have been harder because the um, internet's just so big. But one way to kind of help beat those algorithms is to um, post more often, but please don't post more than one or two posts a day. If you post excessively, that can hurt you just as much as not posting at all. So please tell me when I get too long. Oh, I wanted to ask you too, yes. is there a specific time of day that you feel that like is you a get good more? question. Very good question. My daughter is a market works in marketing. And um, I'm always hitting her up for question on these questions. And she did find out, um, like on Facebook, anything after 5.30. But for Instagram, I've noticed if it's earlier, it's much better. So I kind of take her, her and whatever the internet tells me um, suggestions with a grain of salt. What I have found more important than what time you do it um, it pick a time and do that same time every day yourself. Like I will post at maybe 8 a.m. and again, I'll post a picture at maybe between 8 and 9 and then around lunchtime I'll post a video and that seems to really work. Um, yeah, I wondered if you were getting up at 3 a.m. to start Oh heavens no. Post yeah. it every day. <laughs> no, no. I try to paint ahead so that helps. That's but good. um you are that's a great question. Definitely um try to post at the same time every day, not necessarily a certain time. Now there are times when I might post something at 11:30 a.m. and the nice thing is uh, Facebook and Instagram will show um, your statistics. There are ways, if you haven't seen that, look in your profile and you can go to statistics and go by that. That will show you when you're getting more viewers. So try to maybe use that as a guideline. Is um, there a specific content that really seems to get a lot of looks and clicks? Yes, but I, I find myself, if I do that, then I'm painting for them and I'm painting more cows and sheep because mm -hmm. those sell. And I, as important as that can be so that I can keep painting, because sales are important. Otherwise, I won't be able to paint as much as I do. Um, I have to be honest, that's the truth. So, but, um, so I do paint a wide variety and... Um, I guess more what I'm trying to say is, um, do you uh, show like a process or yeah you know, that's a good question the, the videos right yeah the more interaction you do the more people are interested a lot of them want to see your face I hate putting my face on there so you'll very very rarely see a picture of me or especially me talking on social media there are some that love to get in front of the camera and talk mm -hmm. about their work and that's not me but they say that helps because people want to see you mm -hmm. and um, another very important thing 
Oh, and seeing the process of you painting, even if it's just one brush stroke, get online. We've if lost you... audio from the library. We're back. Should be back. Are we good? Can you hear us now? Yeah. Okay. okay. Good. So, um, what was I going to say? Um, Oh, like, yeah, if you get on Instagram and you're following artists, see what they're doing. I get a lot of my ideas from uh, what other artists are doing. And I don't know if you're familiar with um, uh, hashtags. When I grew up, that was a pound sign. Yeah. And I finally figured it out. Hashtags are important. They are one way someone across the world can search a hashtag. Let's say someone is searching dog paintings. If you have that hashtag in your post, they will eventually find you. It's awesome and amazing and frustrating because they might find you and they might not. But that is really one of the street signs that they are gonna find you. I found over Christmas a woman in Pennsylvania hashtagged Fort Wayne artist and she found me and bought a painting for her friend who's a nurse in Fort Wayne and I thought that was so awesome and amazing that this woman in Pennsylvania searched in Google hashtag Fort Wayne artist and fortunately You're I had a again. lot of my posts that had that so um, you just never know every don't have too many hashtags but at least um, I wrote down a few for you, and you can see what other artists do. It, it helps because there's some out there that have been doing it for a long time, and they've learned which ones work best. But I try to go by the most important to the least important, and I always start out with hashtag art, hashtag artist, hashtag painting, oil painting, watercolor, impressionism or abstract, dog art, cat art, kitchen art. I mean, it's just, and then sometimes get really creative and write hashtag something silly, and I'm telling you, they'll find you. They'll find you eventually. It's unreal. I might, and this isn't often, like I said, sales are kind of down right now, but um, I might sell a painting that I that's still wet on the easel, or I have literally sold paintings that have been collecting dust for 10 years because that one person out there found me through a hashtag on on Instagram. So. So that so means we better not it. paint over our old paintings. Don't paint over too many. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm starting to do that, though. Yeah. I am finally, because they're piling up. But that's one nice thing about social media and painting the smaller paintings, the daily paintings. They're easy to ship. Um, and if you're not into shipping paintings and all that, people still find you. And if they find out you're a Fort Wayne artist, they can email you and hit you up for a commissioned um, painting. So always take 50% up front with someone um, that you don't know online so that you know they're serious. There's a lot of people out there fishing and it's, it can be frustrating. So you have to weed through that just like you do for anything online. I look at my notes, make sure I covered everything. It's nice too, like if you have a painting to try to get a good picture of it um, and post maybe like Instagram, you can post, I think, up to um, 10 pictures on one post. So that's kind of nice. Same with Facebook. You know, you might have three pictures of one painting. Get a different angle of it. Have it sitting maybe on your mantle. Have a picture of it next to the window with the indoor lighting and natural lighting helps. The better the picture is, and I use my cell phone. I use my cell phone. That way things don't get reproduced as easily. I have found my artwork in China on websites um, for sale years ago. Um, I have a stepbrother that's a lawyer and I asked him, you know, what do I do about this? I don't want my artwork online and people stealing it. And, and it happens every day. It happens to a, an, an unknown artist that's small and um, it happens to the artist that are very popular and well known. Um, you might find your artwork on a mug for sale in, on a Chinese or Russian website and it happens every day. I figured years ago I wasn't gonna let that stop me. I figured people still like original art and they're gonna know if they're buying a knockoff print. Um, they're a little more savvy because it does happen a lot. 
you can shut them down, but they open up a brand new IP address and move on. So I decided I'm not going to let that stop me from being on social media. You can also put, um, there's different apps that you can download like a watermark and you can write your name right across the picture that you have and that can keep them from being able to reproduce your work. Um, let's see here. I hope I'm covering everything and I'm probably covering too much. Um, oh, and another thing. Um, Facebook and Instagram have another really popular um, option now called Reels. You might have seen them if you follow me or other artists on there. That's where I show my videos and you can download music to it. It's kind of fun. You can kind of go down a rabbit hole and, and edit and spend too much time on it or you can, I try to spend the least amount of time so I'm not, more time to paint, that's the important thing. But um, you just go right to, um, it's hashtag reels at the, you'll see it on the top of your screen for Facebook and, um, or Instagram, and it gives you options to download your video and add music to it. And another very important thing before I move on or let um, you guys talk, because I'm getting too wordy here, but um, all these questions you're gonna have when you're trying to edit film or edit your pictures or your videos. What I do is I go to YouTube. There's many tutorials on YouTube. It's amazing. You can just search how do I edit my photo or how do I download this video to Facebook. There are videos for everything on there and it's very helpful. Or I call my 13 year old son in to help me too. But another big can we one. borrow him? Yes, yeah. <laughs> I know he could make some money probably for um, making his own little channel. And they're me, having trouble hearing you. Okay. Can we try the other mic? Try the, try Susan's mic. Okay. Is that better? Sounds better in here. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. They are, but I'm going to address the questions at the end. All right. I'm going to give you one more tidbit of information on how to find help, and then I'll let um, John and Susan talk. This is a big subject, and I know it's. I know you have a lot of questions on how to do this, and I I understand. Um, let me find my paper. Okay. So. <laughs> Adobe, if you're familiar with Adobe, they have, you go on their website, Adobe, A-D-O-B-E, and they have a little tab at the top, and it's Discover. And you go to Adobe Discover, and there are podcasts and Adobe Discover tutorials on how to do any social media. So if you go to the podcasts or the tutorials, tutorials there are forums with actual artists on there that will explain how to do reels and stories and posts for Instagram and Facebook. So again, that is adobe.com and search at the top, there's a tab, discover. And there's one more, let me find it here. You know what, I will look it up and I'll give it at the end with the questions. Thanks guys, I hope this was helpful. I know it was probably overwhelming, but definitely give social media a chance because it opens the world, it brings people to the doorstep of your home. We live in a very thriving art community in Fort Wayne, but years ago it really wasn't and now you can bring someone from the other side of the planet or next door or the next state over just through social media they can find you and it's it's rewarding so hang in there and don't get frustrated don't and try to set a time limit because you can find yourself on there way too long mm -hmm. pick up the paintbrush and and uh enjoy Thanks, Heidi. Thanks. Heidi also mentioned that she would be willing to put some of her information on our uh, Fort Wayne Artists Guild members only Facebook page. So if there's something you know, that you might have missed, she would be um, posting it on there for you. So thank you. All right.
John. Okay, now to the really important part. <laughs> All right. I mean, can everybody hear? Can you hear on online? Can you hear? Okay. Now listen, this is how it goes. <laughs> Just messing with the Zoom people. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing that you should probably do in, in, if you want to succeed in art, you've already done. You've already joined your local art organization. I mean, and mm -hmm. it, is, it is the truth because, what, is 13, 14 years ago, I walked into one of these meetings for the first time, and I am probably 13 or 14 times the artist that I was then. And that, that, that is directly related to the uh, uh, community that I have I've really um, found. I found my tribe. I always say that. Mm -hmm. And um, when I first joined this, I, I, people were like, you don't want to join that. It's just a bunch of old ladies. <laughs> and it kind of was. But then it became John and the Art Chicks very fast. <laughs> Not only join, but get involved. Okay, I will stop plugging the Fort Wayne Artists Guild. The next thing you should do is decide how you want to market your art or whether you want to market it. If you're fine just being a Sunday afternoon painter and you just paint for the joy of painting, wonderful. That is what. That is what it's all about. If you're not having fun doing this, you're doing it wrong. But if you do want to market it, you have to decide which way you want to go. Do you want to be rich and famous, or do you want to be famous and rich? Because one's going to follow the other, no matter what you do. But you have to decide which one you want. Do you want the money, or do you want the recognition? If you want the money, you have to go out there and you have to hustle the sales. And how do you do that? You learn how to talk to people. The first time I ever, believe it or not, gave a presentation in front of the Art Guild, I was so nervous, I was shaking. I was just petrified. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not. That is hard to believe, John. Believe it or not. <laughs> I was petrified. I had to do an entire demo, and I barely knew anybody here. I was, I was pretty new, and, they, and Annette Colgrove had asked me to do the demo, and I reluctantly said yes. And it just seemed people just kept coming and coming and coming, and it seemed like there was 300 people there. There was probably 30, 35, but it seemed like 300 to me. And you know, that day I realized I had a big weakness that I – if you want to do this, no matter if you want to be rich and famous or famous and rich, you need to learn to do public speaking. You really need to learn to, to get up in front of people and be able to talk to them. You have to, be, otherwise doing a demo is literally, literally watching paint dry. So if you can't entertain them too, you better be the world's best artist, and I never was, so I had to learn how to entertain them. So I joined a Toastmasters club besides the Fort Wayne Artists Guild, and I learned how to do public speaking. It isn't just art. If you want to succeed, you're going to need other tools. You're going to need, if you don't have a 13-year-old son at home, you better find out somebody to teach you some social media. I will be hitting Heidi up for a couple questions that I have because I really like her time-lapse videos that she does and I have no clue how to do them. And it's probably really simple but I'm not 13 so I don't know how to do them. If you want to succeed in Fort Wayne there is a, a group of artists and art lovers and people who follow the, 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 the Castle Gallery crowd and there's also a Studio K and there's, 
There's several galleries. There's even a Fort Wayne Artists Guild gallery. Mm -hmm. And you need to find your niche. Now, you, by finding your niche, you need to start es establishing a brand. And you can do that by A, what media you use. Of course, some people use all medias. You can do it by subject matter. You can do it by color. You can use pretty much the same colors. Or you can do all three of those, which I pretty much do. All What you want is for somebody to walk in and look at the wall and say, that's a Darlene Selzer Miller piece. That's an Avon Waters. That's a John Kelty. That is what you want. You want your brand out there. That is the most important thing. You want, it's all about name recognition and work recognition. The rest of it will follow. Now, if you want to be famous, you have to put yourself out there and you have to be able to um, take some rejection. Because when you enter shows, even regional shows, there's always that chance. The three regional shows that I would suggest that you all enter are our venture show, the ArtLink Regional, and the Wasenberg Art Center in Van Wert. All three very good, very established shows. I have gotten into all three, and I have been rejected from all three. ArtLink Regional and um, the Wasenberg Art Center in Van Wert, Ohio, which is coming up in May. Ours is also in May, and the ArtLink Regional is in the fall. Now, once you get into a couple of those, well, what's the next step? Well, there are state shows. There's the Hoosier Salon. There's the Indiana Heritage Arts Show. There is the Minotrista Show, and there are several others. The Richmond Art Show in Richmond, Indiana. Um, I've been in several of those. I've been rejected from all of the, no, no, I've never been rejected from the Hoosier Salon. I've always gotten in. Every time I've entered, I've gotten in. Now, the one that I had the most trouble getting into was the Watercolor Society of Indiana show. And I finally got in it for the very first time last year. And it, it just, it, I was getting into the Hoosier Salon and people were saying, well, that's a really tough show to get in. And I was getting into the Indiana Heritage Art show and people said, that's a really tough show to get in. And I was entering the Watercolor Society of Indiana show and people were saying, you didn't get in? So it just depends. You have that piece in front of that judge at that time. And a lot of these are getting to be um, electronic submissions and you have maybe 10 seconds, maybe 10 seconds to get that judge's and it could even be that the file size was wrong, and that's mm -hmm. why it got rejected. I mean, it might not even be the work. That, that, so. That's another meeting in itself, the, yeah. the, the <laughs> file size. And, and um, a lot of the, the places that you enter electronically, if your file's the wrong size, it won't enter it. It'll reject it. Mm -hmm. That's something new they put in, which was a very nice tool that they put in for you. Um, and once you get into a few of those, what are you going to do? Well, if you want to be famous, you have to go to and try some of the national shows. Sam Hoffman, who is a, a um, member, is a signature member of NOOPS, the, what is it, uh, the National Oil and Acrylic, and Acrylic Painters Painter Society, which means he's been in several of their shows. Um, Gwen has also been in national shows. Gwen Gutwein. Um, Tom DeSommer just got into a huge show, the epitome of, of watercolor shows, the, the, the American Watercolor Society show. That is the creme de la creme for the year. 
you will also get rejected from a lot of those shows. I've gotten in two. I even won an award at one. And the very next week, I was rejected from ventures. <laughs> but there's the a saving grace week. for all the rejects yeah. with our salon show that we're having. So. so you have to develop a thick skin and you have to be able to put yourself out there and the recognition will follow. And once the recognition starts coming, then the sales will come. But then you're going to raise your prices. And then your your sales will drop back down again. But once you sell a painting, an 11 by 14 for 400 or 600 dollars, you can't sell the next one for 300 because you just ripped off the person who sold who bought the one for 400. Now you're dealing with collectors. You're not dealing with your friends. So it's a different, it's a very different animal. So when you start to really succeed there are some pitfalls and believe me everybody wants you to donate a painting too and that's a good idea it's good PR but you have to pick and choose you can't donate one to everybody you have to learn to say no remind me of that the next time somebody asks me because I have a lot of trouble telling people no that's about what all that I do, um, somebody said something about me being in art fairs. I have never done an art fair. I never will do an art fair. I have set up so many of these pop-ups. That is work. I think that Heidi could work. talk about that. Yeah, Heidi does those, but not I've me. I've only done one, but I've done it twice and I love it. And I am considering maybe one more due to a year, possibly. But it was an experience, definitely. I'd, I'll talk about it if you have questions. But My, uh, How I do it is one-on-one, -on -one and I work a crowd. Now, you may not be able to do that. I can. But you have to know your place. Like, like at an art, artist guild function, I am not going to be as blatantly self-promotional as I would be at if I was doing something at Paradigm Gallery where I have work. You know, when when I'm with the Artist Guild, I, when you sell, I sell. That's the way I look at it. I look at it as the, the, the total price. But when I'm out on my own, I will push people, I will push you out of the way to get to a customer. I, and I won't care. John, why don't you talk about the open studio experience and if that was valuable? Well the, well, the very first open studio I had was last September, and it was a two-day one. It was the Falling for Art Tour. And two days before the uh, uh, tour began, the roof caved in, and, and, and so much water came in. It was, it was just unbelievable, and it stunk. And they, while I was having the open studio, they were ripping the old roof off. And there was stuff coming down, and you could hear it hitting the ceiling tiles. And it, it was, I just smiled and pretended it wasn't happening. <laughs> but and, your work didn't get damaged. And, and no, nothing got damaged, because we had it all, it, it was all, they did the part over my place last. But the, the, where it was the worst was in the room next to mine. So you could just hear all that, all this stuff. There I said it. I said the right word. I want to go on there. <laughs> um, you could hear it falling while I had customers in there. And everybody's looking over there, and I just keep talking. <laughs> it's just like, isn't it happening? Is it, isn't this bothering you? It's like, no, I'm going to drink later. It's all, it's, everything's good. <laughs> and I did. <laughs> but uh, um, mostly, you have to have your work there. You have to probably demo. They want to see you work, too. No, that's another thing you need to learn to do is is demo work while people are watching it can be uh, the first time I did it was um, 
at uh, Taste of the Arts before Kikianga. It was before we even had Kikianga. It was it was for Art Link. I was doing a live demo for them, and uh, I was really that painting was terrible. I mean, it was bad. It was it was hot out. And I was just screwing it up. It was just bad. And I just kept pretending that that's the way I wanted it to look. <laughs> because what else can you do when you, and, I mean, you can throw a fit and, and throw it aside with everybody watching you, or you just have to just power through it. But um, the open studio, what you, you, you have everybody there, and they're there to see you. They're there to see your work. So it is prime sales time. And you know, you also have to realize that sometimes they're not gonna buy, they're just there to look. And that's fine too. You've got to learn to let them look too. Mm -hmm. But if they even hint at wanting a sale. Close it. Yeah, and the one thing I will tell you that you, would you, if you were getting, if you went to get your paycheck and your boss said, will you take $200 less this week? Would you take it? Then why in the heck will you let people bargain you down on your paintings? Don't do that. I had to learn that too. If you want, if they want a deal, Tell them to buy two. If they're coming back after they already bought one, you can give them a collector's price. But other than that, you make them pay the price. It's your price. It's not a suggestion. That's all I have. OK. Thank you, John. That was very informative and enlightening. <laughs> OK, Susan, take it away. Can you guys hear me okay? Okay. Um, I have been in sales, management, marketing, advertising my just about my entire um, career. So I have a lot of experience in sales and I know people have this perception of sales that it's, it's being pushy, but it's really not being pushy. It's all about connecting with your buyer. People like to buy they just don't like to be sold so for me i think a lot of you the easiest place to connect with your buyers if you're not in the pop-up gallery i would encourage you to do so because it's a great place to meet people the people that do come in they're already interested in art so you're not having to go find them like i do in my day job <laughs> so when you're in outside sales i have to get rejected all day long i might make 20 calls I, you have people that don't want to talk to you, hang up on you. For all of you, you don't have to do that. It's, if you're, and I use the gallery just because for me, I think it's an easy, again, easy place for you to connect with people. So when, if you have someone that comes in, they're already interested, and the way I would suggest that you connect with them is to ask them um, open-ended questions. And if you can remember, Ted, it's tell me, explain to me, describe to me, to get them to open up. Well, tell me what kind of art do you like? And you might hear people say, well, I really like seascapes. Oh, that's wonderful because we have artists in the gallery. They have some wonderful seascape paintings. Um, explain to me where you envision hanging this painting in your home or, or, or tell me if you're, oh, you're buying a gift. Well, tell me a little bit more about the person that you're buying this, this painting for. I'd like to know about them. You are trying to get them to open up to you. So it's not really about you doing a lot of talking. It's trying to get them to talk, get them talking with you. And you're trying to, again, just discover more about them so you can get that conversation going. And I know it's, um, it may be difficult for people because you feel uncomfortable. I've just been doing it for so long that I'm used to talking to people. So, and even like John was talking about when he's doing his demos, that just learning to talk to people because they, they want to know about you, they want to know about your art. Um, I've made friends at the gallery, and then they say, Oh, I'd like to see more of 
more of your art or if I have somebody that comes in and they say oh my daughter she'd really like to learn portraits oh my goodness I need to show you Hillary's work I need to get you connected with Hillary again just that um, that telling me more and as John mentioned with um, rejection even have that mindset when you are applying um, to art shows that if you're not getting rejected enough you're probably not applying to enough shows that you should expect to be rejected uh, for me making maybe 20 calls I might connect with two people so and I think I even just read an article about entering shows and they said the exact same thing that you really should expect to be rejected but you just can't take it personally um, and I will say that for me I do read a lot of books on sales and business and I would encourage you if you want to really learn a little bit more about some other avenues as far as selling your art there are some good books out there one that I would really recommend that I really like is called art money and success and what I like about this book is again she goes into determining who your buyers are and how to find more of your buyers and it could be um, if you have if you do horse paintings okay well how do I find more people that like horse paintings maybe I need to go to equestrian events maybe I need to enter these specific competitions and how can I find more of these people um, and for me I think like John mentioned I do paint for the joy of it since I've in sales all day long sometimes I think when I'm done selling for the day I just want to pick up a paintbrush so I I mean even for me I realize I need to spend more time marketing my art and finding more of those people uh, where I've had my sales I think has been some of those personal connections where I've just met people uh, they might say hey we really like your work we'd like to show your work here or hey I have a, a a friend or I just I'm doing a commission painting for the guy that um, I've hired he's painted at my house he's painted my walls he's installed light fixture so then he you know he saw my work just being in the house so he commissioned me to do a painting for uh, of, of him and his wife so um, think about making those connections getting to know people uh, whether you're at the coffee shop or at the gallery uh, anywhere else that you have a chance to make new friends is how I look at it. Um, Tammy Hindman, we would, um, before COVID, on a cold winter Saturday morning, we'd go sit down at Starbucks downtown and paint. We brought our watercolor paints and we had so much fun just talking with people because again, like John was saying, okay, you people want to see you paint but they also want to be able to talk to you they want to have a conversation so you just need to open up and say hey what do you think uh, I mean not that we were selling work right then but we were still making friends we were getting to know people people said oh I really like you how can I find more about you we got business cards um, so it's just expanding your um, your circle of people that you know and so for me, that's um, kind of sales in a nutshell is making that connection. And even to John's point, if you do have someone that is buying a painting to be able to ask that question, hey, tell me about, um, you really like this painting. What would you think about hanging two paintings together? I have another painting that, that I painted together with this one. And I think they'd be beautiful hanging together. What would you think about that? Um, so it's trying to get them talking and envisioning what it would be like um, to own this painting. Because obviously, if you're, again, people, they like to buy. They don't like to be sold. But they're excited when they, they are buying artwork. So if you have them in that moment, they're already excited about uh, buying. You might as well try and, and get them to buy a little bit more. Um, so I I mean I'm happy to I could talk about sales all day long but uh, um, I, I hope pardon me oh it's tell me explain to me and describe to me you're welcome the question was what is TED when she used that earlier 
I have a question for you, Susan. Um, what do you think about art licensing and making prints of your work? I, I'm not, I, I think it's a great way to, um, again, it's another um, revenue stream. I think even like Heidi was talking about social media with your online presence, you can open up to the world. I think we have a lot of artists that are doing prints and licensing, that's another avenue mm -hmm. of, of YouTube um, for you to sell your work. So I think it's, you have to figure out what is best for you, whether it's art fairs. Um, I think art fairs would be fun, but I can see even with a pop-up, it would be a, a lot, lot of work. work. <laughs> It would just be a lot of work. We could borrow her 13-year-old. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he could haul he this He charges stuff. a nominal fee. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did that wrap it up for yeah. you? Okay. Um, I'd like to maybe just touch on art fairs just a little, Heidi. You didn't okay. get really much of a chance to talk about that. And then we'll sure. open it up for questions. And I have a few questions from the Zoom people as well. I have to say I've done the Roanoke Renaissance um, Festival, Renaissance Art Fair, twice now. And I did it the one year, let's see, it was 20, it doesn't matter. But I did it one year, and then my son picked the same date the next year to get married. <laughs> so I didn't do it that year, and I was kind of bummed. But And then COVID hit, so I didn't do it that year. But I just did it again last fall, and I'm telling you, I'm kind of, really I enjoyed it so much but a lot of that is because I plein air paint in Roanoke on the streets at least well in the good months when it's warm at least two or three times a week I've made a lot of connections there Susan touched on business cards bring those business cards I have burned myself so many times in the past in the early days for getting to have a business card because I go by my name Heidi Malott no one knows how to spell that so maybe if you do open an art page maybe Heidi's painting something like that would have been that's if I could go back I would make it an easier name to find me but definitely help let them find you by a business card so the art fair I signed up um, a lot of them offer a discount if you sign up earlier I prefer a one-day art fair I know I'm looking into maybe Coventry they have Covington there's two-day art fairs but I don't think I have that in me yet if ever the one day really worked well you set up that morning um, I have a wonderful husband that helps me with, um, he helped me build my, the picture on the Fort Wayne Art Guild display, uh, had a picture of my tent and displayed my small paintings. Now, selling smaller paintings was a nice way for people to see my work and the cards that I sold and not have to bring thousands of dollars to an art fair. You can um, buy a small painting they're collectible, you can buy them for a, a gift for someone, they're not a huge commitment. So art fairs for me worked well with selling my smaller pieces. Um, and then of course definitely have some larger pieces there and um, I found it was very important to, um, well we're in such a wonderful age where you can have, um, they can buy it from your phone. You can get the little chip, the square, or whatever makes it way easier. Um, so you definitely want to accept charge and cash. Um, I did not accept checks. Most people don't plan to buy at an art fair with a checkbook anyway. They um, And definitely have your business card setting out. Um, have it open and welcoming. They're usually the small tents, so you don't have a lot of mo room to move around and you kind of feel awkward um, because they're kind of crowded. You don't want to crowd them. You want them to be able to walk around and look at your stuff. And um, I definitely, I like being friendly and talkative to them, but I don't want to push them. If they are looking, I'm not going to be pushy one bit. If someone wants to buy something, that's awesome. I'm not gonna push them in that little art fair. Um, sometimes people will walk around, look at your work, walk around the rest of the fair, and they might come back. I don't wanna burn a bridge by being pushy. And um, uh, anyway, so it was a good experience. 
you do have to um, have a lot of materials up front. You have to have your tent. You have to, you may need electricity. Um, it depends on the venue. So do your homework. Um, there's a lot of really awesome little art fairs around town. I think um, up in Warsaw, the lake, they have a nice fair. Just go online and search art fairs in the area. Um, I've done Roanoke, that's all, but hopefully that helps. But it was fun. I'm, I'm kind of addicted to that one. It's a nice community and they have, oh, and another huge way to get your work out there is plein air painting. It's amazing when if, and that helps, like John said, working in front of someone with a demo, if you haven't plein air painted and someone hasn't come up to you, that's a miracle because people, it's like honey and flies. They love to see what you're doing. They want to tell you about, you know, their aunt that painted, and and it's just it's a neat way to interact with people. And um, you do have to multitask. You're painting and talking at the same time, but make sure you give them a business card. And if you forgot your business card, we live in a world where everyone has a phone. So I wrote on the back of my easel, my website, and I say, oh, just take a picture of my website. Oh, that's and that brilliant. is a wonderful way to because um, some people your won't want to take them. cards all the time yep i have my, them all i have the my same time. exact one john <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've learned yeah, i've burned it, myself this so is, many times this is like eight it. bucks on amazon yes okay same so exact one john <laughs> mm -hmm. i like even those. print my own i'm so cheap i print my own i have a, a picture of my one of my paintings on one side and then on the back just have your name your website your email I don't even give them a phone number. I like to keep people a little distant. I'm not that approachable. <laughs> but anyway. I give them my phone number because I'm easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's very good. Anybody in the crowd have a question for our panel? You did earlier. Yes. Okay. A web question. So what we had was um, somebody had asked about payment for for your artwork online, Heidi, how do you accept payment for that? I use a PayPal account, and I know that Venmo is very popular now. Um, so far, PayPal is working for me, but I know a lot of the younger kids, the generation, are using Venmo. Um, and they all have different percentages that they take on your sales, mm -hmm. but so far it's been worth it um, because you want to those impulse buys, they roll in, and if they have to wait, they may never come back. So right. it's worth that little fee that you might pay to use the PayPal, it, but it's secure. People don't have to have a PayPal account, they just can use their credit card. Right. And, and we have another question from the floor. Okay, another question. Uh, uh, Heidi basically answered it when you talked about copyrights or people just taking your pictures. Um, I've always had the opinion that when people post on Facebook or Instagram, it's a public posting, so it's up Absolutely brand. not. No, but it's not. Um, if you take a picture in public, it is um, public. Oh, it's The public can do with it what they want. But your artwork is something you made, and it belongs to you. Even if you sell that painting, you still own the rights to the image. Mm -hmm. Now. Um, with laws, it's frustrating because you can issue a cease and desist letter for maybe someone that is copying your work. What usually happens, as soon as you notice someone that's doing that, you send out a cease and desist letter or contact them yourself, and they usually close up shop and move along. And the squeaky wheel gets the grease. You know, they're if you're gonna squawk, they're gonna move on to someone else unsuspecting. Okay, one more question on, on the Zoom. Well, it's actually a request, John. They wanted to have a list of shows and timelines for the shows that you mentioned. Ventures, <laughs> ventures. Like Right now? <laughs> right this minute. Right yes. this minute? Um, it could probably be posted on the yeah, yeah. Facebook uh, uh, page. Facebook. That's, that's something that, would that be helpful to the, to the, to the yeah. group? Have, have, start listing shows and when yeah. the deadlines are and stuff? Yeah, because definitely. Because I looked up a bunch of them today. Um, that would be great. 
That'd yeah, you, or you could just Google it yourself. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, I I could try to put that together, or um, you know, delegate it to somebody else, which is probably what's going to happen. Let's not kid ourselves. But um, yeah, that that would probably be a good idea for us as a group. So and there are some coming up that are, are there's two of them in May that I know of that the deadlines are in May so and uh, the state ones are uh, there's one in May and then IHA's I believe in June and Hoosier Salons I believe in July and Richmond's in the fall and then you have the one up in Elkhart and I don't remember when that one is Seemed like it was. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we could put that together. Yeah, Dre. Yeah. Then they can hear you. Okay. So so like with Facebook and Instagram, um, I have a page. And I, I, then I have a personal page, and I have Instagram. Is there any way to post it all three, or because normally it just lets me post like to my page and my Instagram, but and right. then I'll have to share it to the other page. You, to save time, you would like it to just post to all three. Is it there is a way, and I know from Instagram, let me pull my phone out so I can make sure I remember how to do it that way. On Instagram, on your post, there's going to be three little dots up in the right-hand corner on your post after you post it. So post it on Instagram and there's going to be three little dots at the top of your post and if you click it or touch it, it says post to other apps and then you po you click that and it will, especially if you already have a Facebook account, that Facebook account, account should pop right up mm -hmm. and then you click on it and hit share and it will automatically go on to that account. It saves a lot of time doing that. And that was one thing I was going to bring up. There are apps that you can download that will um, schedule and post them out ahead of time too, which saves you a lot of time. Now I've had them. I've had hiccups with them, and I've gotten stubborn and and stopped using them because. I couldn't get it to work, but my daughter swears by them. She works for a company that she has to post to a lot of different places at once. And I will write that down for the Facebook page as well, and maybe we'll get it out somehow for everybody, the, the app that does that. Is there uh, any more questions on Are there any more questions in the room? Yes, Nancy? Have they bought several of your pieces? Then you can, then, yeah. I mean, it, it, if it's somebody who has several of your pieces they're not going to um, buy probably your cheapest one they're they're looking to buy more of your work so you would you would give them possibly a, a, a slightly better price than you would someone else mm -hmm. and your question was you. what okay. <laughs> um, John had mentioned uh, a Toastmaster, so everybody wants to be comfortable with public speaking, that we do want to approach people because they want to get to know us one-on-one. -on -one. Where can we sign up for Toastmasters? Toastmastersinternational.com. There are, there's a, there's a meeting here at the library. I know there is. Um, I am no longer in it because it was at work and uh, after, during the, when the pandemic hit, it just kind of folded. You know, I, I, once we could meet again, we never got started again. It would be tough to find um, somewhere right now, probably. Thank you. There are usually Toastmasters booth all over. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah they're, they're all over. There's, there's like six or eight clubs. We have another question back there, John. Boy, I'm running all over everywhere. Yeah, right. Vanna. So you were talking about like find your brand and all that. So how do you figure that out? Like, do you just, Lots of everything time. you make, you put out for sale? 
how do you figure out your brand? Well, the hardest voice to listen to, the absolute hardest voice to listen to, and there are a lot of them out there that'll tell you how to paint, the hardest one to listen to is your own. You know, the, I mean, you, you'll get critiqued and people will say, well, you need to do this and this and this and this, and then you'll be a great painter. And it's like, no, no, that's not what I want. That's not what I want to do. You have to trust your gut feeling sometimes and then stay with it and see where it leads you. You know, if you're going to, if you always paint street scenes and, and all of a sudden you say, well, I'm going to paint these boats. Well, it's, it's totally different for you. So paint 12 boats, 12 paintings of boats. Now all of a sudden it's not different for you. It's another thing you do. So it, you, you've got to think about how you're perceived and also how you're perceived in, in sometimes you can get yourself in a situation that, that isn't what you want to be perceived as. <laughs> You know, I mean, you can get yourself into a, a situation that is, is, goes against your brand, too. So you have to be careful of that as well. Do we have any other any questions? Because we're running out of time. Okay. Guys. Any other questions for the Zoom people? I don't see anything else in the chat, but. Do we have any other uh, people who want to share besides Jerry? Jerry has a painting he would like to share. Stand up, Jerry, and share us your painting. Come up here so we can see it. Turn around. There you go. Thank you for sharing. Um, Production facilities provided by Access Fort Wayne. Learn more under the Explore tab at acpl.info.